Marshall's algorithm. In Marshall's algorithm, you can find transitive closure of a graph. So first, we will see how to write the adjacency matrix. So for this graph, we can write the adjacency matrix like this because from 1 to 1, there is no edge, write it as 0. 1 to 2, there is no edge, write it as 0. And 1 to 3, there is an edge, write it as 1. So this adjacency matrix will give you information about the graph. That means, is there x is an edge from i to j in general. If there is a edge from i to j, then i through and j column will be having value equal to 1. For example, here from 2 to 1, there is a edge, so write it as 1. And 2 to 4, there is an edge, write it as 1. Okay. And here from 3 to 2, uh, here in uh, 3 to 2, there is no edge, so it's equal to 0. But from 4 to 2, there is an edge, write it as 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. There are 4 edges here. So, look at here in the adjacency matrix, you will be having 4 ones. Similarly, you try writing adjacency matrix for this graph also. So, once you have written the adjacency matrix, then what you are required to do is find out series of this R. R0 is initial adjacency matrix. Then R1 indicates first vertex is introduced as the intermediate vertex with that you may get some path between some pair of vertices and in the second iteration you are introducing second vertex as the intermediate vertex with that you can achieve some path. So like that you can achieve path whenever you introduce some intermediate vertices. So in order to uh, apply this Warshall's algorithm, before applying Warshall's algorithm, I will explain what transitive closure of a graph. So, <coughs> here uh, there is no direct edge from Vi to Vj. But if you introduce, introduce this k vertex as the intermediate vertex, you can get the path from Vi to Vj. So, how? By introducing Vk as the intermediate vertex. So, transitive closure of a graph will tell you whether there exists a path between every pair of vertices or not. So like that, between every pair of vertices, you are required to find out the path. That is transitive closure of a graph. Now, uh, here, the equation is Rij equal to Rij or Rik and Rkj. So, there is no edge here, that is 0. 0 or with Rik is 1, Rk is j is 1. So, 1 and with 1 is 1. So, here you can say that there is a path from Bi to Bk. Now, in Marshall mm -hmm. algorithm, we can see how you can change 0 to 1. Since you are introducing kth vertex as the intermediate, you are required to box kth row and kth column. Okay, so look at here R I K is 1, R K J is 1, 1 and with 1 is 1. So you can replace now 0 with 1. This is how you can change in the matrix. So let me, let me explain the algorithm first. So initially assign adjacency matrix to R0. And then between every pair of vertices, you have to introduce n vertices as the intermediate vertices. In the first iteration, first vertex as the intermediate. In the second iteration, second vertex as the intermediate vertex. So like that, in the nth iteration, you are introducing all n vertices as the intermediate vertices between the every pair of vertices. So now, uh, vary k from 1 to n, i from 1 to n, j from 1 to n. Then Rik go to Rk, Rk minus 1 Ij, that is in the k minus 1th iteration. So what is the value of Rij that you have to write? That is to be on with Rik and Rkj. Okay. Then find out the time complexity. Here time complexity is n cube and space complexity is theta of n square. Now we will see uh, for this graph how to write the adjacency matrix. So, from A, uh, outgoing RO, only one outgoing edge 
that is going to be so write it as one here remaining all zero from b there is only one outgoing h that is going to d write it here and from c there is no outgoing h all equal to zero from d two outgoing edges it's going to a and c a and c so totally one two three four edges look at here in the adjacency matrix also we have four ones here so once you have done this adjacency matrix next thing is you have to use first vertex as the intermediate vertex for that reason box the first row and first column then so whenever the column element box is zero zero and with any uh, one it can be one or zero will get the zero only so no need to do any changes for the first row right as it is in the second row also the column element box is zero if you say zero and with one you will get zero only so here also you cannot expect any change even in the third row also you cannot expect any change but in the fourth row you may expect some changes we'll see uh, that in the fourth row the column element box in the fourth row is one so one and with whenever you have one already there is a path existing no need to cross check whether path is there or not already you have said it is equal to one whenever the matrix value is one no need to cross check whenever it is zero you have to cross check whether this zero can be replaced with one or not so for that we'll see here zero zero or with one and one that is one so replace this zero with one here it's already one no need to check and here it is zero one and with zero is zero this is the chain what you are going to get when you introduce first vertex as the intermediate vertex so the only change what you got here is this one that is whenever you introduce a as the intermediate you can find a path from b to d earlier there is no direct edge sorry uh, here d to b d to b there is no direct edge but when you introduce a as the intermediate you can get the path from d to b how d to a a to b that is what the only change what we got after introducing a as the intermediate vertex now we'll see is there any change we are going to get when we introduce the second vertex as the intermediate so for that you are required to box the second row and second column i have done it now when i introduce second vertex as the intermediate in the first row the column element box is one so you may expect some change here one and with zero is zero one and with zero is zero no change here zero zero or with one and with one is one so this zero can be replaced with one now in the second row the column element box is zero so you cannot expect any change in the third row the column element box is zero so again in the third row there is no change in the fourth row we'll see is there any change occurs in fourth row or not one and with zero is zero but already you have one so one odd with zero is one then write one as it is here also one right as it is so here zero odd with one and with zero sorry sorry uh, one you have to cross check with the the box row sorry one and with zero is zero but already one one zero one then one and with zero is zero but already you are having one here written as it is now zero odd with one and with one is one so replace this zero with one look at here when i introduce b as the intermediate vertex you will get the path from d to d earlier there is no h from d to d 
but after introducing E and B, you can get the path from D to D. How? D to E, A to B, then B to D. So that's why here we have changed this 0 to 1. When we got this, after introducing A and B as the intermediate vertices. So in the third iteration, you are introducing third vertex as the intermediate vertex. So you are required to box third row and third column. With that, uh, we will see what changes it is going to happen. In the first row, the column element box is 0, so no change in the first row. In the second row, the column element box is 0, so no change here. In the third row, the column element box is 0, no change. In the final row, the column element box is 1, but already all the elements of the last row is 1. No need to check whether we can change one, uh, 1 to 1 itself. No need to cross check that because already all equal to 1. There is no zeros here. In the final iteration, we will see what changes is going to occur. So since you are introducing fourth vertex as the intermediate vertex, you are required to box the fourth row and fourth column. Fourth row, fourth column is boxed. So in the first row, the column element boxed is 1. So 1 and with 1 is 1. So replace this 0 with 1. So already it is 1. No need to cross check. Here 1 and with 1 replace 0 with 1. Then 1. Here 0. 1 and with 1. 1 here. 0. So we will see whether this 0 can be replaced with 1 or not. 1 and with 1. 1. Here we will see for this 0. 1 and with 1. So 1. Okay. Then here in the third row the column element box is 0. You cannot expect any change in this. In the last row it is already equal to all ones, no need to cross check even though column element box in the last row is 1. Look at this, the final matrix what you are going to get is this one. This is called transitive closure of a graph. That means within every pair of the vertices, you are checking there exists a path or not. Adjacency matrix will give you information whether there exists a edge between every pair of vertices or not, that information will be given by adjacency matrix. But in transitive closure matrix, you can come to know between every pair of vertices, there exists a path or not. Look at here, between A to B, A to remaining all the vertices, A to A and remaining all vertices, there is a path. And from start from B, you can reach to B and remaining all the vertices. But start from C, you cannot be able to reach to any other vertices. Why? Because there is no outgoing edge from C. Looking at the graph itself, you can say that you cannot be able to reach to A, you cannot be able to reach to B, or you cannot be able to reach to C, D, or even C also. Why? Because there is no outgoing edge from C. And start from D, you can reach to remaining all the vertices and even D also. So this is the transitive closure of a graph. So using Warshall's algorithm, you can find transitive closure of a graph.